Now painting a camouflage scheme on a single infantry model, they are tiny. But when it comes to doing slightly bigger things, like a small vehicle, or drones, they are slightly bigger, which gives you a bigger canvas to play with. Therefore, you have the opportunity to have a play and level up your cam scheme. Now, whatever size model you're painting, there are some key principles you need to bear in mind to make sure it reads correctly to the eye. Now, I went through this in more detail in the previous video about the towel Pathfinder, and if you haven't seen that yet, I'll put a link for you down in the description. Now, to show you what I mean, I'm gonna use the Recon drone from the towel Pathfinder box set from the Warhammer 40K, but this will still work for any mech any drone from any other gaming system. So as usual, I have gone over it initially with an airbrush using the Vallejo Mecha Primer in black. Now this gives it a really nice satin finish, which is a really nice base for any mechs or drones that you're working on. Now because this drone is gonna be in the units with the Pathfinders, I wanna use a similar sort of base to try and tie it all together. So I'm gonna use the Vallejo Model Air Sand Yellow, the same as I did with the Pathfinders, to pick out the panels I want to put in the camouflage scheme. Now, of course, you can try and make up your own camouflage pattern, but it's a lot easier if you use a reference photo. So I found this image of Multicam, which I want to use to, to explain what I'm talking about. Now, first of all, if you look at it carefully and try and dissect it a little bit, the very base, the very bottom color is that kind of sandy yellow we put down on the mech in the first place. Cunning that is like I almost planned it. Anyway, so yeah, I've got that sandy yellow base, but also, if you look at it, it's got a slight graduation of a brown kind of going through as well. That sandy yellow kind of fades out in a slightly darker browny tone. I think it's got some greens and some very dark browns in there and a very almost like white bit as well. Now the next thing to look at as well is also some of it kind of fades out. So the, the brown, the lighter browns and the greens kind of fade out in places, but the very dark browns, the black, almost black bits and the very, very bright beigey white bits also don't fade out. They're quite solid. Now, another thing to note is look at the, the direction that the splodges run. They're pretty much left to right, so that's something to think about as well. Now, the brush I'm gonna to use today is the number one from Series 33 from Rosemary Co. Now, Series 33 is their Klinsky Sable range. Now, I must say, I'm not getting paid for this, not sponsored, but I love these brushes. Now, if you wanna check them out for yourself, and also a double whammy of helping support the channel, then there is some affiliate links down in the description, if you wanna. Now, do you remember that picture of the multicam we had at the beginning? Now, do you remember that kind of slight variation, very gradual fading of that sandy tone underneath the other colors? So I'm gonna replicate that by mixing some darker brown with that sand brown and then making a wash out of it and then putting a really untidy wash over the, all of the sand color. Now, I wanna have darker in some places and a lot lighter in others. I want that graduation to be very, very gentle. I don't want any brown splodges. Now, if it does start to pool a bit or get a bit too dark in places, then I can go back with some water and kind of wash it out a little bit, fade it in a bit. Now for the next layer, I wanna use green. Now, one thing I find really handy is having that reference photo in front of me while I paint. So I'm literally gonna copy some of the shape on that multicam and now replicate that on the model itself. Now you notice back on the reference photo is that some of the greens are also faded out. So I'm gonna put some quite sharp, well-defined shapes in there, but also in other parts, fade it right out down to the base color. Okay, so for the next layer, on top of the green is gonna be the very dark brown. Now I don't wanna use black, so I'm gonna use this German camouflage black brown instead. Now this layer, this dark brown layer, gonna overlap some of the green parts. Now on the original multicam photo, this dark brown doesn't fade out. So this one, I'm gonna keep quite defined shapes. Also, I'm gonna try and maintain that left to right flow that you saw before, rather than having going up and down. Now looking at the reference photo, it's quite a bright, slightly off white. So I'm gonna use a beige, but I quickly realized it was a bit too bright. Therefore, I toned it down a little bit by tinting that beige with a little bit of the brown. So for the trim of the drone, I'm gonna use a chocolate brown because it ties nicely in with the rest of the cam scheme and doesn't look out of place, but at the same time, it's very different to the colors we've used already. So therefore, it'll help to maintain those shapes and therefore help the eye read it better. So as we've discussed in the previous video, especially with camouflage schemes, you need to make sure the shapes are clearly visible. Otherwise, it will just look like a camouflage blob. So I'm gonna create a, a black pin wash to re-establish those recesses where some of that sand paint has got down into the recesses, but also to help define the panel lines. Now, because it is a black wash, it's quite stark, but that's what you want on this particular model. So I'm gonna try and base this up a little bit. After stippling on a little bit of Vallejo gunmetal metallics, onto that gun barrel to give that a little bit of a highlight and then painting in the lens and sensor arrays, this is done.
If you liked that, if you found that useful, please bash that like button and share it across your social media. And I'll see you for the next project.